Uh, now let's see another approach. Uh, let's see a diagram showing the architecture of Kubernetes. Uh, so as you can see, it's fairly simple. Um, this is this is a real Kubernetes infrastructure diagram, but it's uh, it's more like a troll than a, than a useful learning diagram. This is a more um, realistic diagram of Kubernetes. So what do we have? Um, on the left, the the blue rectangle is the control plane. Uh, the control plane is basically the that's the brains of the cluster. Uh, it's composed of a handful of services, API server, scheduler, controller manager, etcd. I will give more details about them in just a minute. And then on the right, the three big colorful rectangles are nodes to run my containers. On each node, I have infrastructure. So that means it's a machine. It could be a physical machine. It could be a virtual machine. It doesn't matter. Then I have an operating system. Most often times that's going to be Linux, but Kubernetes can also work on Windows now. Then I have a container runtime. Again, most often times that's going to be Docker, but it could also be something else like Cryo, Container D, Gvisor, etc., etc. Uh, and then on top, the little color boxes are my containers, like my applications. On the side, on each node, I have a couple of services, Kubelet and Kubeproxy. Uh, and I will also explain what they, when they are used for. Um, so that's, that's the, that's like the, the overview of, uh, of Kubernetes. That diagram over there, so why did I put that diagram? Um, first, it helps to uh, have something to check that people are indeed awake. Uh, and also, th this is also a real container diagram. Uh, we only have two nodes on the left and on the right, uh, but they are using some shared storage uh, using Linux LVM and multipath ISCSI. Um, so that that's why there are so many layers and it's so complex, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, it's basically, hey, this is how you set up Kubernetes with shared storage uh, on the SAN uh, with high availability because of the multipath, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So let's uh, look a little bit more about uh, in depth uh, at what we have on the nodes. So on the nodes, um, beyond the container engine itself, we have two services, Kubelet and Kubeproxy. Kubelet is a little agent uh, whose job is to connect the node to the control plane. So the kubelet is going to connect to the control plane and say, Hi, I am node 2. Um, I have uh, two CPUs and 10 gigs of RAM and that much disk space. Um, do you have any containers that I should be running? And then the control plane is going to, Oh yeah, why yes, I'm glad you asked. You should run this Nginx and also this Java thing and this and this and this. That's the, the role of Kubelet. And then Kubelet keeps updating the control plane to say, oh, this, con this container just crashed. What should we do about it? Um, et cetera, et cetera. And then we have Kube Proxy, uh, which is, I put like a necessary but not sufficient network component. Uh, Kube Proxy provides part of the network story in, in Kubernetes. Uh, specifically, when um, my containerized workload uh, tries to connect to another service, um, it's the job of Kube Proxy to take that connection uh, and um, load balance it to the to the right place. Um, now, on the control plane, uh, we have a handful of components. Uh, first, the API server. The API server is really the, the 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 central thing. Almost everything connects to the API server. Kubelet, the the kubelets like the the node agents connect to the API server. I connect to the API server when I do kubectl kube commands. Uh, the other control plane services, like scheduler and control manager, they also connect to API server. So everything transits through API server. The only thing that doesn't connect to API server is etcd. That's the API server that's going to connect to it. Um, so let's see uh, the, um, the... I have a diagram here. Yes. Uh, that illustrates, so API server, um, then kubelets connecting to API server, and the other components connecting there as well. So what's the role of the, of these different components? Um, etcd is the database uh, where Kubernetes is going to store all the root information. What nodes do we have? What other applications that we should run? Uh, all the really important data is stored there. Uh, you see like SSOT, that means single source of truth. Um, so that's, that's the thing used as a reference uh, to rebuild everything else. We could lose the controller manager, the scheduler, and the PI server. That's fine. 
as long as we have its CD, uh, we can um, fall back on our feet again. Then we have controller manager and scheduler. Controller manager um, is a set of loops, each responsible for a specific type of object. So in, in Kubernetes, we, well, we will see like shortly, we have a bunch of different objects like deployments and pods and nodes and services and et cetera, et cetera. And so for each object type, there is a, um, a, a control loop that watches these objects and um, when when something needs to happen on these objects, and that's the that's the control manager job to uh, to do that action. So that's that's the I don't know. I could say the API server is a little bit like the the, the central nervous system of the cluster, and controller manager is the legs and arms do carrying the actual actions. Then we have the scheduler. Uh, the scheduler is a specialized piece of code. Uh, it's basically a world champion of Tetris. The, the goal of the scheduler is to pack the workloads uh, on the cluster. So it, it has information about the size of the nodes and the size of the containers, and it tries to make that fit together. Okay. Um, so the, the, the that control plane, um, sometimes we call that the master. Personally, I prefer to stick to control plane uh, because very often when people think about the master node, they say, oh, there is a master node, so it's like one specific node that's which runs the, 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 the control plane. But there is not always a master node. Sometimes we have multiple master nodes because we are in a highly available uh, deployment, so we might have like three or five master nodes. So then um, just talking about one master, it doesn't make sense. And sometimes we have zero master node. Like what? If we are using basically any managed Kubernetes service, the control plane is invisible for us. We, we don't see it. All we see is that API endpoint and we can connect to it and that's it. We don't know if it's running on VMs, on containers or on the moon or whatever. Uh, so in that case, it, we can still talk about the control plane because these components are still running somewhere, but we don't really have a master node. 